Hello out there in the YouTube universe. And I wanted to share with you uh, how to make a particular kind of alcohol stove that is new to me. And I, I found it to be extremely simple, extremely fast, and great to use if you're in a pinch. So if you're watching this video, you've probably seen lots of videos of guys using beer can stoves to cook some ramen noodles out in the woods. I'm here to show you another video of a guy using an alcohol stove to cook some ramen noodles out in the woods. But I wanted to share the particular design of the stove that I'm going to be using and I'm going to build it for you today. Uh, it doesn't take very long. I did not invent this particular type of stove. I, I came across it through a Vimeo video and when I get back somewhere where I can edit this video I'm going to do my best to post a link to the original video so you guys can take a look. They used a beer can for theirs. Uh, today I'll be using uh, this can of something called LaCroix. It's like a Perrier carbonated water kind of thing. <clears throat> I'm going to be using a pair of scissors and I also have this handy dandy El Cheapo knife but I bought it because it said support our troops and I support our troops. I also chose to bring it along because this curved Karambit style blade is going to come in pretty handy uh, as we're making the stove. Um, you don't have to have a pair of scissors to use it to, to make the stove, but they help because you can make cleaner cuts. So I brought a pair of scissors along, but if you happen to be out and you don't have a pair of scissors, and everybody should have a pair of scissors in your first aid kit, but if you happen to be out and you just don't have a pair of scissors, um, this can be done with just a knife. So one of the first things you need to do is take the end of your blade and just stick it right down in there. And you're going to want to go all the way around and remove the top of the can. Now if you're at home and you have the opportunity, you can use one of those really nice side cutting can openers. <clears throat> that make a nice smooth edge on the can so you don't cut yourself, there's no, no rough edges or anything like that. See, you have your empty can. It's kind of rough around the edges so you want to watch that if you're making it this way. Uh, if you're at home doing this, I suggest you use a can opener of some kind and maybe you can file those edges down. It's very easy. Uh, the next step to building this can is I'm just going to punch a hole in the side of the can, cut it out, and cut the can in half, okay? And for your bottom half, you want to pick a spot, uh, you know, I would measure maybe about two fingers. Um, if you are someplace where you have some tools and maybe a ruler or something, you might want to look at about an inch and a half to two inches for it to really work well. And you just want to cut down and around there. Best you can. Okay, so that it's like that. Now, Again, in a perfect situation, you want to have this nice and, you know, flat and level all the way around. My cut is pretty imperfect. If you can see, it kind of wobbles up and down, but that's okay. Um, you know, if I had a little more time, I would work on this to make it more even, but that's okay. So you can set that aside with some of your metal out of the way. And now for the top of your stove, you want to have it about the same height as the bottom of the stove because one's going to fit inside the other one. Okay, so I'm just going to cut this down just a little bit. It helps if you choose a mark on the can and try to use that as your marker for where you want the, the height of the can to be. Add 
this one little piece sticking out, so we'll get rid of that. These scissors aren't doing such a great job making clean cuts. So there, it's, it's just about, eh, it's just a little bit too tall still. So I'm just going to take maybe a, a millimeter off of there. And again, if you're working with a knife, it's going to be much more difficult to do this. But the beautiful thing about this stove is because it's because of how simple it is, uh, you know, it doesn't matter if you're not absolutely precise with how you build it. Okay. There we go. These are just about the same height. And now all you have to do, you can use the blade of your scissors, you could use the blade of your knife, although this curved blade is not so great for this particular step. Uh, it's better if you have a straight blade, a uh, bowie knife, something like that. But you just want to put two fingers and then take a blade or something flat and make a nice crease between your fingers. And each time you make one of these creases, up here where the ridge of the can is, put a little dent. These are going to be your alcohol vents where the flame shoots out of. Okay? Just do that. Go all the way around. Two fingers. Press the blade in between those two fingers. Little divot in the top of the can. A lot of mosquitoes out today. Very interesting. Covered with bug repellent. And they keep coming and flying around. And I think they've decided, since they can't bite me, they're just going to buzz next to my ears and in my face. Well, I think that's okay. Come and invaded their territory, so I'll take it easy on them. All right, so when you're finished... Your can should have a scalloped edge that looks kind of like that. You may need to go around and just kind of reform some of those creases. You want them to be fairly deep. And they do iron themselves out as you go all the way around the can. So you may need to go around twice and just make sure. Put those creases in there. And then all you need to do, top of your can should slide right into the bottom, and your stove is complete. Now, let's light it up. One last step that I forgot to mention uh, in making the stove is you want to take the stove and put um, a small hole anywhere around the rim. Uh, I would use a thumbtack or maybe a nail. I don't have anything like that with me today, so I'm just gonna use the tip of this knife and punch a little hole. That's all it takes. So, looks like we're ready now to light this puppy up. The can is relatively tall. Uh, you can make these stoves out of smaller cans. I have uh, another one here that I made from a uh, so some kind of juice drink, um, but this can is similar in size and shape to a Red Bull can. And I was able to use my can opener that left a nice smooth edge around the, the top there. Um, and this smaller can works wonderfully, works just as good as the larger can. One thing I will say with these stoves is I have tried making them shorter in height, uh, maybe instead of this tall, trying to make it about this tall to make it more uh, easily packable. Um, the shorter stove doesn't work. Uh, the fuel burns a little too quickly. It goes out too quickly and uh, doesn't get the job done. This particular size stove, as well as this one, which is smaller but still fairly tall, um, 
about an ounce, maybe an ounce and a half of alcohol fuel will boil an entire canteen cup here, uh, about 24 ounces. Um, we'll boil it in something like six minutes. Uh, I have also used the stove with a regular round cup. It works just fine. This sits right on top and it's great. Uh, this one is a little on the small side, but um, I've used it with a larger one, 30 ounces or so, and it brings the whole thing to a rolling boil in um, usually less than seven minutes. Uh, I've also used this stove with another canteen set that I have that's made out of aluminum, which I don't have with me. Um, and the aluminum transfers the heat a little bit better than stainless steel, and so that boiled really quickly. So your mileage may vary based on your conditions. If it's windy outside, obviously, it's going to take a little longer to boil stuff up. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the stove inside of this ring. And like I said, about an ounce of alcohol fuel usually gets the job done. And an ounce in this stove is just a little bit less than half full. Okay, so if you look in there, see it's just a little bit less than half full there. And the other thing that I really like about the stove, unlike other alcohol can stoves, there's almost no priming time. It's ready to start cooking immediately. So it's a really great double wall design. Pour some water here. And we are going to place our water on our stove. And while we wait for the water to boil, I just wanted to show you guys something. I um, Last time I went to the doctor, my blood pressure was a little elevated. So I've decided to try looking for alternatives to uh, ramen noodles out in the woods because even though they're really convenient and super cheap and easy to pack, um, they have a ton of sodium. So I'm really fortunate to live in an area that's very ethnically diverse and I found an Asian grocery store that sells in bulk these bundles of noodles that are made from rice and they're not deep fried or anything like ramen noodles are. And they have a ton less sodium. So I've got a pack of these and they come in these little bundles. So all I have to do is drop it in the Ziploc bag. So I have a package of these and I just cut up some red pepper and garlic with a little bit of red curry paste and that's how we're doing it today. Alrighty YouTubers, we are probably about a minute and a half to two minutes or so from rolling boil. So I'm going to go ahead and add the noodles to this delicious dish so they can begin to cook. Well folks, it looks like we've come to a boil and the flame is just starting to die down a little bit. So I'll let this boil. Brought it to a nice rolling boil and it took, like I said, it took just about six minutes, maybe a hair over that. And the noodles are all cooked down and everything and I'm realizing now I probably put a little too much water in here. So next time it should take even less time. But anyways, I just wanted to show you this new stove design that I like a lot. And for those of you who decide to use it, I hope you enjoy it too. It's just about burned out. We'll go ahead and take advantage of the last little bit of flame. Hope you enjoyed it. 